So I'd want to start off this video by um, reading this first comment. By Irk. <laughs> With a little heart emoji. Uh, the meaning of life is just to be alive. It is so plain and obvious and so simple. And yet everybody rushes around in a great panic. As if it were necessary to achieve something beyond themselves. And it's like, well, you look for meaning. And it's like, well, you have to kind of, I feel like people are we're confused. Right? Because you'd have to find that out subjectively. Because there's no there's no objective meaning. You're at a you're in a losing game if you're looking for objectiveness. Uh, I mean, but it's all subjective. Like if you just don't haven't found it yet, well then you've got life to experience. Right? You got life to live, and you've got experiences, good and bad. Some of them may feel like shit. You may feel lonely. You may feel depressed. And sometimes you maybe be feel happy. And maybe you'll even have a moment of immense joy and ec ecstasy you know and it's like well you gotta take it all in and if you feel like you can only live because of meaning then well go on living then because i mean find the meaning because you're gonna have to because go ahead and throw yourself in the in a pool go like if you can't swim go ahead and throw yourself in the middle of the ocean you're gonna see yourself just recklessly not recklessly but like ferociously I should say you're gonna find yourself grasping to life you're gonna find yourself fighting to survive you're gonna realize well, you don't want to die you just maybe you just feel like you know your perspective and hopefully not actually physical pain and well it's also like well your reality right it's your experiences I mean to some extent you know you can't say well a lot of things are out of my control and it's up to me to control my perceptions of that and that is true you know, because you know your perceptions your thoughts and everything they become your reality they become your way of being um but there are people who just well they do have very shitty situations don't they and i wouldn't be so quick to say maybe you watching there I w me not me or you watching there i don't think we should ever be so quick to say well i'm one of those people that just has it so shit well really you really you know, you gotta have gratitude. You gotta take it all. You know, you, uh, I think my philosophy is, as of right now, just to experience it all. You know, to be a down ass fool that's open minded and to study, to get as much knowledge as possible, to consume as much as possible. You know, to just experience it all, the good and the bad. To just do it all. You know, to take risks and do it all. Like have as many experiences as possible. Say yes to things. Try new things. Step out of that comfort zone. Whatever comes from it, don't matter. Whether it be shit, whether it be a commitment that I don't want to have, doesn't matter. Right? Like, if you're trying to win and you're trying to feel pleasure and you're trying to not have commitments, well, sure, it might be a dumb play, but I think what's important is to live, right? Because you have to realize, you know, it is, it's what's necessary, you know, the meaning of life is just to be alive. And what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you to be alive? You know? And it's like, well, that's exactly what we're going to find out, you know? Well, I don't know. This is just called the best life advice you've ever heard. It's probably wrong. So let's see if that's true. This video is sponsored that's by my life advice. Books. Let's see if I'm wrong, right? I mean, it's just no right or wrong answer. It's just about experiencing things. So it's like, well, go out in there and experience. I'm not telling you how to live. I'm just telling you to try not to hurt people. That's the one rule I have. Try not to hurt others. That's it. And take risks. Two rules. That's the only two rules I can give you other than that. Well, there's no life advice. You should really be looking for i mean of course we, all we are is just you know sponges we consume things you're never going to be completely free of influence of others but well be yourself right be yourself summary service blinkist i got papaya with right the now. years behind him stacking higher and higher chris had begun feeling the pressure of time tightening in on him he felt the tedium of days increase as they flipped like cards being shuffled in a deck, blending into one long, obscure motion nearly indiscernible from one another. By most standards, his life was generally pretty good, but he struggled to ever really enjoy it much. The tedium and anxiety and confusion seemed to gnaw at him, and he constantly felt the sense that life should be something more. In his adulthood, Chris frequently found himself wondering what he was missing or doing wrong seeking wisdom for how to best live. Chris felt all of this generally building in the background of his life, compounded over the last several years, 
As friends drifted apart for no real reason, family members passed away with age, and moderate life successes turned stale before ever really being enjoyed. It was in this moment though, just following his girlfriend of five years, leaving him alone in their apartment for her last time, that he felt the feeling truly and totally overtake him. Her last words still echoing in his head, I'm sorry Chris, but it's impossible to be with someone who's never happy. Chris well, sat laid her. back on the couch in his apartment's living room, alone, staring at the ceiling as rage and sadness fist fought in his head. It was a Sunday, and the next day, he had to be at work at 9 a.m. for his accounting job. He drank from a whiskey-filled glass as he thought about his life. He contemplated more seriously than ever the idea of skipping to the end of the movie. He felt a hopelessness fill him so heavily that in this moment, without Chris being conscious of it, a few of the strings holding together his normal self snapped, which, unable to withstand the weight of Chris on their own, caused more strings in his head to snap in succession. In this, a sort of death occurred. The end result, some form of Chris on a plane on his way to China with one bag of clothes and necessities, one debit card, a cell phone, his passport, no real plan, no real communication with anyone, prepared to spend whatever portion of his life savings and however much time he needed in search of finding what he was searching for. And so what was he searching for? What is he doing? This ain't, this ain't ego death. What snapped in there? Is to play the social game? Is he playing the social game? That's what that is? He's tired of playing the social game? He's a thinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, what have you. You know? Then you get to the end of it all and you say, well, I've, I've done that, right? And then maybe you can't help but feel a little bit cheated when you're around his age, right? Can't help but feel a little bit cheated. You're just like, well... You know, I felt like there should be more to this. This is what Alan Watts talked about. I think that's why they put Alan Watts at the top of that comment section. <laughs> uh, maybe right now he's escaping the social game. He wants to be alone. He wants to do something new. Maybe. Like most people, this idea of dropping everything and disappearing into the unknown with no plan or destination had circulated Chris's mind plenty of times before. But of course, he never acted on it. Until now, it never felt like his reasons were big enough or perhaps his reasons not to were big enough, but now he felt the seed of the idea sprout, watered by desperation and worse alternatives. He was set out to touch the freedom of nowhere to be and nothing to do. A complete toss of caution to the wind, willing to lose everything in hopes of finding something else. Once that? in China, Chris wandered Anything somewhat else. aimlessly by himself. He visited different cities and towns, temples, art galleries, gardens, outskirt lands, every nook and cranny he could find and stumble across, essentially backpacking China? and staying in little hostels or camping along the way. He sought places and people <laughs> whom he could learn from. He talked with those he met about matters of life and- How could he talk to them? They speak English? Wouldn't they be speaking like Mandarin? He's in China, no? You're talking to people that speak to people commonly speak English in China? I don't think so. I don't know, China's like a foreign world. I mean, they just want to, like, disconnect themselves from society so much. And it's crazy that they can even do that because they have a lot of people. So it almost works, right? I mean, they have to still maintain some sense of connection with us. But, like, they're people. They don't even have access to the internet. Unless they use a VPN. But it's like, fucking hell, dude. Just con let them connect. You know how much more people we'd have online if China was in? If if China if China's government ever got like overtook or like thrown over right whatever they were overthrown, um or they just had a change of heart and they were like you know what fuck this, you know having our own internet and being so private and 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 broken apart from the world right because I'm sure there'd probably be some benefits of them joining up so like maybe it's not impossible but it would take a pro it would take a while but it's like imagine all of a sudden they just dropped all their users on us bro. How much bigger the internet would be, Jesus Christ. <laughs> they find out about Cristiano Ronaldo, he gets a billion followers <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> and death, briefly welcomed in by some and shown their ways. In particular, Chris was repeatedly directed by many towards one individual who was supposedly a revered teacher and guru of sorts that many traveled great distances to seeking answers and advice. Chris would work his way in the direction he was pointed, eventually finding himself in a province at the foot of the Himalayan mountains. 
After some time of waiting, he met the person whom he was told about, a lovely older woman who somehow felt both small and large at the same time. Chris introduced himself and the two talked cordially for a little while. The woman asked him where he was from, his reasons for being there, and so on. Chris explained to her as well as he could, and when the timing was appropriate, he said, If I may ask, in your view, how should life be lived? How does one make the most of this whole thing? The woman paused for a moment. Uh, man, why do we want to ask that question? Why do we, like, we humans love to feel like we need to know all the answers? And I'm no different because I'm a curious man. I love, I love answers. I love to know things. But it's also like... You keep asking, you realize there's no answer. So can I be fine with the fact that there's no answer? It feels like people... Like, you want to know, then just get into philosophy. Like, then, then when you get into philosophy, it'll be clear to you. Not the answer. It'll be clear to you that there's no answer. Like... At least you've gone through the process of studying and there's no more question in your mind that maybe there's something out there for you. That maybe there's something that you more that you could have done to figure out a way to make the most out of this whole thing. Like, there's just different ways to look at it all. Of course, there's no definite answer. There's no, this is the way for everybody. It might be a way that might work for you if you're willing to subscribe to an idea. I'm not willing to subscribe to an idea. I use all these tools. I'm a Stoic. I'm a Buddhist. I have, I have Buddhist philosophy... I have Stoic philosophy, I have Taoist philosophy, I have all kinds of philosophies in my arsenal now, and I'm arming myself with them, and I'm extending their life of those philosophers into mine, like Schopenhauer said. You, know, you, should, be, you should be into maybe the arts and, and philosophy, maybe you should be. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing, get into philosophy or the arts. And if you do know what you're doing, well, I'll power to you, keep doing what you will, you know? And... You know, well, everybody should just be experiencing things, having experiences. That's the way to make the most out of this whole thing, which is, what is this thing that you're describing? It's experience. It's being alive. It's like, okay, go and be alive. Live a little. Live. Experience. Try different things out. Not may Maybe purposefully or maybe purposelessly. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. There's no right or wrong. Just go do something, right? Experience new things. Say yes. Take risks. Just live. Right? It's the meaning of it all. It's just to live. Just live. <laughs> Excuse me. Even if living... It, it sucks right now, then just change the way you're living. Change it all. Experience new things. Keep it fresh. You might walk into something that sucks. Okay, well, you could change that then. And then you'll go into something that's good. Okay, well, that's gonna then get stale again. It's like, okay, you're going to get bored and you're going to want some other thing. Okay, well, then go and chase that new thing, right? And then it's like, okay, well, maybe you're bored of that. Go and try this other thing. Well, oh, that's shit. Okay, well, go try this other thing. And that's experience. That's all it is. You're never going to be constantly in bliss. You're never going to be happy all the time. Happiness is a cause and effect. Matthew, Connie, whatever his name is, Matthew McConaughey, he has a whole fucking speech on this. He's the fucking, he knows. Man, it's all about joy and enjoying the process. You're never going to have pleasure. In it. Like, you're never going to have... It, like, constant pleasure. You're never going to have constant happiness. That takes away the goodness of it. If you just have it, you need the yin to the yang. You need to know what bad is for you to know what good even is. You need to have something to compare it to because that's the way that we work. We work in terms of concepts and ideas and, and images. That's the way we work in concepts. And if you don't have anything to compare this conceptualization to, if you don't have anything to compare this feeling to, right? If you don't have anything bad to compare what pleasure is, if all you ever did was experience pleasure, then pleasure would just be the norm. And it would be stale and boring, and it wouldn't feel as good, right? And it's like, well, it only actually well it does feel good for its functionality is because you're an animal, and it's and you and it's like this natural selection insurance and and like motivator to push you to do this thing, which will help you propagate the species. And it's like it's nothing more than that. It's not what you're supposed to be necessarily thriving to feel all the time. It's just nothing but constant dopamine and feeling great and all of this. No. No, well, you 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 could. It's just like well, that's but that's not the purpose. It's not you could and you could also not be seeking that, right? You could be doing what like you see. There's no answers. There's no way to live. Well, there's there's ways to live. There's no one way for everybody. Just go out and experience and get it all. Get all of those philosophies in there and incorporate all of them. If you can't do it at the same time, then mix and match. You know, like try this for once. Believe in God one day, 
don't the next, right? That's how it is. And inhaled in a commanding manner, nice green, and then nice said, green tea right here. Do not chase worldly pleasures or material successes, Chris. Do not succumb to the temptation of the moment. The only real is the eternal real. Work for what is hard but necessary, what is meaningful in the long run. Let go of yourself and dissolve into this. You only have one chance at this life. You must take it seriously and make something of it. Give up trivial pleasures and desire. Yeah, but have guide to for now. But also work towards, you know, that's the way the Stoics have. You know, whatever you have is substantial. You have good enough. Be grateful for what you have. The 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 cheaper that, that you're, that you're, um, the, the cheaper the pleasure is, the richer you are. Because, you know, once you pleasure something, you know, when you desire something, the, the, the cheaper your desires, I should say, the less pain, right? Because the more you desire, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But that works too, but it's a cop-out too. Uh, so it's like, well, do that, but also try becoming a millionaire. Try being somebody that's fine with nothing and happy with the bare minimum. But also experiment being like, you know, that Grant Cardone guy and, and being all about hustling and money and only thinking about the future uh, or just only thinking about the present, but you'd be a slave to both. Really, the ideal thing is to not be a slave to any temporal illusion. It's like, okay, well care about the present and do yourself a future uh, a favor in the future but if you want to go ahead and, and 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 live grant cardone's philosophy or andrew tate which i mean not, i don't really like the guy but it's like you want to do that go ahead and do that and experience it's more experiences you're experiencing life it might not be for you you might not like it well then switch it up do something different just go out and try it go out and try things right go out and try different philosophies different ways to perceive the world to live Desires in consideration of the long game. Live and contemplate in the garden of life beyond you, Chris. Always be growing and improving and adapting. Leave yes. your legacy strong and sturdy. That is what it means to live a good life. After a little bit longer, the conversation reached its natural end. Chris thanked the woman and left on his journey alone. He felt a sense of immense clarity in her answer as he thought about it over to himself. It made great sense to him and sounded appropriately wise. He stopped along a small river while walking and wrote in one of the notebooks that he had brought with him. Still somewhat unsatiated, Chris continued on his travels, visiting other countries and places. After several pit stops and many moments of difficult challenges and disorientations, Chris would find himself in the country of Greece. Here he visited cathedrals, museums, art galleries, parks, outskirt forests, every nook and cranny he could find Greece. and stumble across. He sought places with people from whom he could learn from. Many directed him, in particular, to National Gardens Park in Athens. Here, supposedly, a highly regarded self-help type of writer worked and wrote on the weekends. After making his way and forcing a seeming coincidental bumping of paths, Chris met the man while he was working at a small table in the park. Chris introduced himself kindly and told the man who he was, his reasons for approaching him, and so on. They talked about this and that for a little. At the right moment, Chris said to the man, If I may ask, in your view, how should life be lived? How does one make the most of this whole thing? With little hesitation, the man said, Enjoy the moment, my friend. Seize the day. Do not wait for what might come, because what might come is always uncertain. Do not live for some imagined later or what might come after you are no longer here. Enjoy and indulge the simple pleasures of life right now while you can. You only have one life. Do not work too hard. Do not take it too seriously. That is what it means to live a good life. <laughs> the two talked a bit further unto the conversation's end. Then Chris thanked the man, said his farewell, and left on his journey alone. He felt a sense of clarity in the man's answer as he pondered it to himself. It made great sense to him and sounded quite wise. He stopped on a bench just outside of the park and wrote a little summary of the conversation down in one of his notebooks. Chris would continue on and on. For weeks he traveled and wandered from Greece to Romania, from Romania to Austria, eventually finding himself in France. France. At the direction of others he met along the way, he found himself seeking a woman who was regarded as one of the great modern intellectuals. Oh yeah, who is she? Chris found her at Café de Fleur in Café Paris, Fleur. as he was told he might. He timidly approached no, her table France, after France finally away. happening. Right, the French, we gotta love the French. What love the French? Never been so happy to see the French.
We don't love the French, man. Café de Flore. Buy at the right time. I'm trying not to buzz in that too much because, well, I'm looking how many times. I'm looking at how much I've been recording. I don't know how I've been talking longer than the video has been playing. It's like when I'm talking, time just flies. I swear, and I talk too much. He introduced himself. Not quite welcomed by her initially, but after some charismatic coaxing, she engaged him in a brief conversation. At some point, when it felt right, Chris said to the woman, If I may ask, in your view, how should life be lived? How does one make the most of this whole thing? With a confident smile, the woman said, It's all a balance. You have to live in the now, but also be sure to think ahead at the same time. Enjoy the pleasures of life as often as you can, but never so much so that you neglect the future. An indulgence of the now, sustained by a constant and simultaneous reminder that there are more and better nows still to come and hold out for. The balance of the two makes both great. That is what it means to live a good life. Chris thanked her for her kind willingness to spare a few moments now you say and left David her to Goggins, it. he'll tell you no. David Goggins will say, well, you're going to have to be unbalanced at some point. You're going to have to be unbalanced to be the best at what you want to do. Right? I mean, that motherfucking... Who, who, who's that one dude with the, 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 with the nerdy glasses? He's just like, man, you can't do shit without money. You can't change the world without money. You can't do nothing from a position of weakness. Like, you, from the position of being broke. I've been broke, and I've been rich, and I choose rich every time. I mean, Leo DiCaprio said that same shit, but like, you know, you know, you know what I mean, you know? Yourself. As he walked away, he was again struck by the wisdom, convinced by the clarity of the woman's words. He sat at a little bench in downtown. They all hold the same weight, but none of them are the one. See what I'm saying? They all hold weight. They're all very valuable. And they're like, well, implement all of them. If you can't do them all at the same time, because it's not really possible, I mean, you can't really be like an ascetic monk and then go and be Grant Cardone. You know, like, <laughs> it's not going to work out. And wrote what she said in one of his notebooks. Do it here. A few days later, still somehow unsatiated and growing increasingly tired by this point, Chris would find himself in Germany at a small debate between two philosophers of whom he was directed towards. After the debate ended, Chris approached one of the philosophers at the bar attached to the auditorium that the event took place. He introduced himself briefly and naturally started a conversation. They talked about this and that. When appropriate, Chris said, If I may ask, in your view, how should life be lived? How does one make the most of this whole thing? With a deep, slow, and tired exhale, the man said, We don't. Don't you see? We are condemned by our awareness of the future and the perpetual slipperiness of every moment. We are stuck between the finite and the infinite, the now and the later, unable to ever reconcile this balance and know how to make the most of either. To make the most of now risks the future, to preserve the future risks never making the most of now. To be human is to be aware of and desire both, forced to live in between. And to live in between is to never touch either. Wisdom is accepting this condition. Live with the pessimism and lower your expectations, and the occasional good will emerge once in a while. That is what it means to live a good life. The man drank from his beer as Chris somberly thanked him and continued on his way. Although melancholic, he felt a sense of clarity in the man's answer. It made great sense and was clearly quite wise. He sat on the ledge of a small city fountain and wrote what the man said in his notebook. <laughs> Where is this going? Chris would continue on and on reading and talking and looking everywhere else he could. Almost without realizing or planning it, suddenly he found himself at home again, lied back on his living room couch. An assortment of books that he had collected along his journey, as well as journals of notes that he took, sat next to him. He thought to himself, reflecting through the pages of his notes and memories. He considered how he had explored different worlds and different cultures, asking some of the wisest members of each how to best live. He received a newfound collection of wisdoms from all of them, all of which sounded powerful and insightful and true on their own, yet somehow together seemed to all contradict almost entirely. Yeah. Chris wrote his thoughts down exactly. in some of the empty space of one of the journals he still had room in. Eventually, after plenty of mostly incoherent babbling, he wrote the following. I went out into the world claiming to seek wisdom, but what I really sought Ooh, this music Eventually, young. after like plenty that. of mostly like incoherent babbling, he wrote the following. What did he write? I went out into the world claiming to seek wisdom, but what I really sought were answers. 
and it is now perhaps my only clear conclusion that wisdom is the ability to know the difference. There is no general wisdom of the kind I sought, the sort of wisdom that is alluded to in aphorisms and cliches. Wisdom is knowing the limits of this wisdom, that it is entirely situational and rarely general, if at all. There are countless ideas and sayings and so-called wisdoms that can justify nearly any way of living. They all sound good because they all are, but by the same token, none are. All ideas and cliches and wisdoms are both true and false, meaningful and meaningless, depending on where and when and how they are applied. Even the most brilliant thoughts and lines ever written or uttered across history inevitably face their falsehoods. I could tell, you know, this is kind of why I clicked on this video, because all of today I even wrote, uh, I have a note with a, with a, I have a fucking voice memo for 23 minutes that I wrote, I, I talked into my phone, right, I used it as my microphone earlier today, speaking for 23 minutes about my philosophy, and it was this, <laughs> I chose the right video, I'm literally hearing what, like, this is a, like, in, a, in different words, this is what I, this is what I've come to know. You know, from all the philosophy I've heard. And it's not like I've had a great... I haven't done what he's done. You know, I haven't heard a great, like, an insane amount. But it's like, well, when you've gotten to... Well, you got some philosophy knowledge and you, you start to kind of... And if you try to make connections and patterns between it all, like, yeah, what's the common theme? It seems like they all contradict, right? And then you come to this answer, right? Meaningless, depending on where and when and how they are applied. Like, yeah. They're meaningful and meaningless, depending on where and where and how they apply. But I mean, you might as well get them all, right? To get all that knowledge, because then there's no question, you know? Because then otherwise, if you don't have knowledge, then you don't know any meaningful or meaningless way to live. You're just, well, you're just wa mindlessly wandering. And there's value to that, too. I guess I should say it in a different way. I don't know. I just see that having knowledge and, 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 phys and philosophical inquiry. Is important can't exactly tell you how it's just like well you like because it, it's it's acceptable to live dumb it's acceptable to live without reading knowledge like it's something that you can't do there's no should or shouldn't but it's also like well you're missing out you're missing out there is one thing that i can say you're missing out if you don't get knowledge like this if you don't go and 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 read about different philosophies and different ways to look at life well you're missing out on a important thing but you could do it nonetheless, but are you really living at that point? Even the most brilliant thoughts and lines ever written or uttered across history inevitably face their falsehoods, hypocrisies, and righteous oppositions. One can travel the world and back through books or on their own two feet just to discover that the answers are not out there. But perhaps one does not need answers nor certainty nor solace of this form. Bad things happen. Life is an impossible puzzle missing a majority of its pieces. To live it in its ordinary form is courage. To find meaning in its mundane meaninglessness is a sort of genius. To just exist for the time one has and to do one's best, that's wise enough. It need not be more complicated than that. One should always be learning and listening and considering the ideas and words of others. But I think I know now that this wisdom is that's always a I means said. and rarely an end. Chris put the pen back into the notebook, closed it, and sat back in his couch, eager to get back to and repair the life that was his. That's what the fuck I said. Yeah. This video was sponsored by Blinkist. That With an overwhelming no, no, amount I like of great that last bit. I like that last bit. I like that this last wisdom bit. Is that last bit was it, bro. That was it. That This bit right here. Bad things happen. Life is an impossible puzzle. Missing a majority of its pieces. To live in, it in an ordinary form is courage. To find meaning, courage. In, in, to its find mundane, meaning in its mundane meaninglessness, meaninglessness is a sort, is of, a sort genius. of genius. To just, to just exist, exist for the time one has and, and to do one's best. best. That's, That's wise enough. enough. It need not, not be more, more complicated, than, complicated that. than that. One should always, should always be, learning be learning and listening and considering the ideas and words of others, but I think I know now that this that wisdom, wisdom is always a means and rarely an end. Chris put the pen back true. into the notebook, closed it, and sat back in his couch, eager to get back to and repair the life that was his.
That's fucking true. This video was sponsored by Blink. Damn. This is why I clicked on this, bro. I knew it. I've, I've, it just now hit me. I thought I was out here looking for an answer in a way. I was looking for like, well, I don't, I, th I didn't really want to subscribe to anything, but I thought maybe if I was, maybe I'm like, hey, maybe, maybe I can, this through learning all of this, maybe I can find out one that seems to be the most right out of all of them. And then you get to it and you're just like, well, don't say it's not looking good, bruv. You know, and it's just like, well, you realize that your search parameters are wrong. You're asking the wrong question. Damn. That's true. I mean, that's my philosophy right there. That's what I was talking about. Anyway, man, if you made it to the end, I have no idea how. I made this video over twice as long. Um, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, and you know, make sure you leave in the comment section down below what you want me to react to next. Uh, let me know what I can do better. Right, Criticize me. Right, Be my haters because then I don't have to get a consulting firm. Because my haters are my consultant firm. And it's like, well, I don't, need, I, don't need, I don't need to get a consulting firm. I need to hire new haters. Right? So it's like, hate on me. Tell me what I can do better. Uh, make sure you subscribe, though, and leave a like button. And I will catch you in the next one, man. Jesus Christ, man. I feel wise. Woo! I love that. I'm about to rewatch that last, like, like, I love when he does that. Those writings. Man, I fucking love you, Pursuit of Wonder. You fucking smart-ass motherfucker. you just like me, dog. <laughs> All right. Well... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>